it's Flo, and this is my impression of a 1930s gangster using Progressive's Name Your Price tool. Yeah, see? This Name Your Price tool really lays it all out on the table, see? All I had to do was tell her how much I wanted to spend, and it gave me options in one place, see? Makes all of it easy to see, see? It's easy to find insurance that fits your budget with the Name Your Price tool. Only at Progressive.com. I might need glasses so I can see more when I'm doing gangster stuff, see? Progressive Casualty Insurance Company. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Good afternoon. It's a couple minutes past the hour. I'm Di Rice with the latest in local news on KCAA 1050. 25-year-old Hector Martinez of Moreno Valley has been arrested in the murder of 19-year-old Rudy Martinez, also of Moreno Valley. The murder took place Tuesday on the 24,000 block of Postal Avenue. After Rudy Martinez was shot, his friends took him to an area hospital. He received treatment, but ultimately succumbed to his injuries. Hector Martinez was booked into the Robert Presley Detention Center on murder. He is not related to the victim. And an injured hiker has been rescued and taken to St. Bernardine's Medical Center where she's being treated for her injuries. The woman was found near Highway 189 and Lake Gregory Drive in Lake Arrowhead. She was actually over the side of the highway near the historic and abandoned Cliffhanger restaurant stuck approximately 20 to 30 feet down steep terrain. Because of the rugged terrain, she had to be carried out in a Stokes basket. Inland Empire weather, mostly sunny again tomorrow with highs near 91 once again, overnight lows near 60. Currently it's about 87 here in San Bernardino. That's the latest in news and weather. I'm Di Rice on KCAA. This traffic and weather report is brought to you by Unbound. Child sponsorship the way it's supposed to be. Real kids, real results, real easy for you to help. Join the fight against global poverty at unbound.org. Hi, this is Di Rice, midday anchor at KCAA 1050. Imagine losing everything you own in a fire your keepsakes, necessities, and your house. This very incident has happened to our own Weatherbug team member, Rod Tanner and his family. They're part of our family, and we here at KCAA want to help them. I'm Mark Westwood, Operations Manager at KCAA. My name is Carlos Gonzalez, and I'm the Program Manager at KCAA. We're encouraging all listeners to give to Rod and his family's GoFundMe account. Any donation will be appreciated. And I'm Joe, Weekend Operations Manager. Any donation amount will do. Just think, if we all gave $5, what it would mean to the Tanner family, who've just lost so much. Please help Rod and his family. Your donations are greatly appreciated. Go to www.gofundme.com backslash Rod Tanner to help. And thank you for your support from the staff here at KCAA 1050. Fridays just got fabulous. Don't forget to reserve a seat in the Happy Hour Lounge with Ben and Alexander every Friday at 6 p.m. on KCAA 1050 AM. Here's a look at the KCAA community calendar. I'm Di Rice. The American Cancer Society invites you to join in the Riverside Bark for Life Saturday, May 23rd at Grove Community Church. Bark for Life is a non-competitive walk event for dogs and their owners to raise funds and awareness in the fight against cancer. The event honors the caregiving qualities of canine companions and remembers those dogs and owners who have lost their lives to cancer. Adults and children are free to attend if your four-legged friends are also attending. For more information, Google Bark for Life Riverside. Also May 23rd. Animals for Armed Forces Foundation and the Pet Adoption Center have teamed up to honor and thank our dedicated Armed Force Service personnel by offering free adoptions to the first 50 military participants, active and reserve. You must bring your military ID, one animal per household. For more information, go to petsadoption.org. And that's a look at the community calendar on KCAA 1050 AM. Electricity prices have been going higher and higher, and experts predict that average prices will continue increasing. You could save thousands of dollars a year while increasing the value of your home by switching to solar energy with Best Energy Advisor, the leader in affordable solar energy since 1987. Everyone's heard about the benefits of solar energy. It works day or night, and it doesn't matter if it's sunny or cloudy out. 
A solar system from Best Energy Advisor is now more affordable than ever. One free call to our experts and you'll find out how to get a solar system installed for zero money down and zero payments for a year. Remember this number, 800-413-9452. We make it easy to go solar and handle all the paperwork to take advantage of the government's tax credits, grants, and rebates so that you can save even more money. But these won't last forever, so call now. 800-413-9452. Don't sign a solar lease until you speak with us. Call 800-413-9452. Go solar and learn how to save money on your energy bill every month. Call 800-413-9452. This is KCAA. Welcome to Smart Health Talk with your host, Elaine McFadden. Welcome to Smart Health Talk Radio Show, everybody, and you're listening right here on KCAA 1050 AM, my favorite radio station, because you know what? We got a lot going on here. We got we got some great hosts, we have great guests, and we have the kind of information you don't get from just anywhere. You know, you turn on the TV these days, and you don't realize there's like six corporations that own virtually every media outlet out there. So they are constantly recycling the same information over and over again. They're controlling what you hear and what you don't hear. They're coveting their sponsors, which are uh, companies that are going out there and doing some not so great stuff uh, when it comes to our food, our environment, trying to influence legislation so that we don't, we can't know if there's GMOs in our food. I mean, so many different things uh, going on with food these days and you know the average person out there there's no way that you could possibly know all this I mean I'm a registered dietitian with a master's in public health and I am like on this stuff all the time and I can barely keep up with what's going on I know there's no way that you the average person out there could be keeping up and they hear conflicting stories on the news all the time don't you you hear you know like something's good one day and then it's not good the next day and like the, the poor consumer out there, they just don't even know what's going on. Well, let me tell you here at Smart Health Talk, we care about you. We care about your health. We care about whether you get sick or not. We care about whether you are able to keep working. All of these things. And so many people, they think, this is the thing that I hear all the time. And this is the focus of our show today. Uh, we're going to be talking about like how to eat the best quality healthy organic food on a budget and I tell you this is the most important thing as a dietitian what do you think my number one choice of food is for you huh what do you think I want what do I think you want you to be eating I want you to be eating organic food because why you go out and ask just about any consumer out there what is the best quality food what do you think their answer is going to be it, they're going to say organic food is the best quality food. And I want to convince you that your body is worth it, that your body deserves the best. People, yes, and there are people that I know they are destitute. I know what it's like to be poor. I have been there. And I know what it's like to be counting every single penny. So, and trying to find money where there is none. <laughs> and I know what that's like. Uh, What I want is for you to learn how to be smart shoppers because when you're smart shoppers, you can beat the system. That's right. You can beat the system. You can have food, good food, organic food, the best quality food for your body because you deserve it. It's going to impact how you feel, how you look, your energy, your risk of disease. All these things are impacted by what you're putting in your mouth, on your skin, breathing in your lungs. You know, whether you're exercising or not, of course, those things are important too. And we've had many podcasts on exercise and that whole thing as well. And, you know, I I hope you're enjoying what you're hearing so far. My name's Elaine McFadden. I told you I'm a registered dietitian and I care about you and I want you to, I want you to have the best life possible. And when, you know, people care about you, you know, you should let them care. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Um, 
because, uh, you know, how many people out there really caring about each other here? Uh, you know, I have, you know, trust me, a lot has been uh, given up just to be here talking to you today. And this is every single minute is precious to us because this time to connect with you to deliver this message, what could be a life saving message, life saving, organic food, there's a reason that people say that's the best quality food that I could possibly eat. There's a reason for that because they know it's not sprayed with poison, which makes absolutely no sense. No matter how you look at it, it doesn't wash off. It's inside of the fruit or vegetable, grain, whatever you, whatever it is you're eating meat, it's in there. There is no getting around it. And not just a couple. No, we got we got a whole array. We got a wide variety of pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, you name it. GMOs, all this stuff. It's sitting there in your food. But when you buy organic, guess what? None of that stuff is there. No, they don't have. Yes, you know, people may say, oh, well, organic farmers use pesticides. Yes, but their pesticides are like way different. I'm talking way different. And Roundup and these other heavy duty poisonous products that they're putting on our food, spraying into our environment, going into our water, our soil. Let me tell you, I've been learning some stuff, and this I got I got to get my phone here because I got to start pulling up my social media. Where's my glasses? Okay, I want to start pulling up my social media because I want I I want all you out there that are listening here. I want you to come and connect with me on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter, on um, Instagram, Pinterest, all those. I'm there, okay? I'm there. I'm, I'm like looking out for you guys. I'm like posting stuff that's helping you to be a smart shopper. That's what I'm posting all day long. And I had like some new pictures that I wanted to post to kind of get the point that I'm leading up to here across which is like this revolutionary thing that I learned recently and I just thought it was so important. And like what, what it comes down to is, you know, this is the year of the soil, everybody. This is like international uh, year of the soil. And this is it. We really need to stop and reflect and think about the soil. The soil is what gives us life. I'm telling you, without that soil... We're like, we're, we're not doing so good. We're not doing so good at all because, you know, we need food really bad. Okay. It's kind of a critical thing. So if we don't have food, we're going to be suffering. And I don't know about you, but I don't like suffering. I want to have the food that I want. I want to have the best food. Um, I want to have, oh, it's not on that one. Uh, I want to have, um, I want to have good quality, um, organic food. And like, how, how do you make that happen? You know, people say, oh, it's expensive in that. Well, I want to, I'm going to show you some tips here today on how you can afford it. And I'm, I'm going to have to go into my photo section because that is where the picture that I wanted to share with you guys must be. And I must have shared it over there. And what I'm talking about, oh, I'm going to be sharing a picture on Instagram. Get this. Potatoes that have, are starting to grow. They have little stubby things coming out of them. Now, the thing is, all the, when I'm talking about like pesticides, potatoes have 35 different pesticides on them, including sprout inhibitors. So, all you regular people out there that aren't buying organic potatoes, you never even see a potato sprout anymore. You probably you probably don't even know what that looks like. We used to have to push that off all the time when we made mashed potatoes. <laughs> you have to push a few of those sprouts off, you know, no big deal. You know, if you want, you can stick it in the ground and then you could have about 10 potatoes instead of one potato. How about that? <laughs> Well, for all those people that have forgotten what a sprouted potato looks like, I'm going to be posting this on Instagram because people just don't see sprouts anymore. 
They don't see it because they all have these sprout inhibitors on there. Now there, where is my picture that I was looking for? Because this is so important. This has to do, oh, there's a new documentary. And this just, the documentary, I watched it because it was free for Earth Day. Symphony of the Soil. Because remember, we're talking about soil here. This is like the big focus of our conversation is soil is where the life comes from. And what we're doing to the soil is destroying it. We're just like ruining the whole system over and over and over again, killing the good guys. But what is really sad is before, like we used to get our, our con we used to compost and we used to put all this organic matter into the soil. And what happened was the organic matter would just keep building up, building up, building up in the soil. And when you build up the organic matter in the soil, that is a really big deal because that organic, now get this, just, I'm just going to throw one little, I don't want to like name all these different statistics, okay, because you're not going to remember them anywhere, anyway, excuse me, but, okay, just to take this slow, I'm talking about organic matter, Okay, now how many of you have seen a soil and it's just like hard as a rock, cracked, you know, you go to pick it up, it just feels like dead soil. It feels like dirt. And there's a whole big difference between dirt and soil. Dirt is kind of a dead kind of a thing. There's not a whole lot going on there. Soil is a living organism. It is living. It is a living thing. It has major systems going on underneath the ground there. There is so much going on. There is like a friggin' city there. They got parties going on, you know, all kinds of stuff. But this is all happening down in the soil there. Okay, and when we start, you know, putting all these poisons in that, what do you think we're doing? We're poisoning ourselves. We're poisoning the very thing that gives us life. And I'm telling you this organic matter, I'm not, I'm not doing very good at finding my organic matter picture, but I know that I have it and I will post it later. But the bottom line is this, this is the stat I want you to think about. When we start raising the organic matter, we have the potential that when it rains, 85% of the rain would stay in the soil. Just think about that. That you're at the ground because of that organic matter, which is like a sponge. It would just so it soaks up all the water and it holds it there. And it's like, okay, plant. I'm gonna, yeah, I got lots of organic matter, not a problem. If you can't soak it up right now, you know, not a problem. Cause I'm gonna hold it here for you. And you just take your time. You soak it up, get that water as you need it. But my job is, or as organic matter, is to absorb this water and hold it here for as long as I can so that you can have as much water as you need um, right here available to you, whether, you know, irrigation is done, you know, tomorrow, the next day or not. You know, that the potential, 85% of the rainwater to be held in the soil and another thing is, like, when you have all this organic matter that's, like, grabbing the water, not only that, but when the water runs off, when it runs down into the river or whatever, uh, that water is clean. Clean. When it runs off, the water has no dirt floating in it, no other debris. It looks clean. When the water finally runs off of that dense organic matter in the soil. And when you, when you have soil that's dead, that's more dirt, uh, the more of the dirt angle. When the water runs off, the water is filthy. Filthy dirty. So doesn't that right? To me, that's enough. I'm like, okay, I'm convinced. I'm convinced this whole having lots of organic matter in the soil thing is a good thing. So how do we do that? Well, a lot of other 
countries, like they know how to compost. Well, we know how to compost here too in the, in the U.S., but these other countries uh, in the Symphony of Soil, they had a really good example on how they compost, and they have um, they have like um, kind of post sticking up in a crisscross pattern so that they have like an air pocket underneath and then they'll put a bunch of hay and then they'll put manure then they put a special tea and this is true in a, with a lot of composting is you have a special tea that introduces bacteria and why is that bacteria important it's a good bacteria it's just like the good bacteria in your gut it's breaking down all of that matter into small pieces quickly so you can get you can turn that organic all that compost and all that other the manure and the hay and all that you're going to turn that into soil yeah that's the that's the recipe for soil everybody <laughs> my the scraps are my kitchen they turn into soil i've mentioned on my show i never throw those away those get buried in my backyard and I'm making soil. That's free soil. So I don't have to go down to Lowe's and buy soil. I got my own soil. So guess what? I just told you one way that you can save money on organic because I'm hoping that you're thinking about growing your own stuff. Now I got I got Joe the engineer here. Now I gotta ask Joe. Joe, have you ever have you ever done any farming? Well, no, just in the backyard, but that's, that's. No, that, no, that's, I, I, I meant gardening, gardening slash farming. So that counts. Currently we, we're, we're growing stuff now. We have greens and um, uh, my son planted some cabbages yesterday. Well, about, about, about a month ago, actually. Yeah. So we are trying to uh, get our green from our own yard. Oh, that's, that's very exciting. Mm -hmm. I think that is really exciting. Now, when you plant, when you, for your greens, did you plant seeds? No, we didn't. Um, in the community that I'm in, I just a buddy of mine had a large stalk, and those things, uh, once you put them in the ground, they just take off, and that's exactly what we did. And it, right now, it's about five foot. Wow. Yeah. You know, I've had the same experience. I actually have had plants that have lasted years. They just keep growing. <laughs> it's like you just go out there, you cut off leaves. It's not like Swiss chard. You know, that's one of the ones that I've had that have grown and grown and grown. And I just go cut off some of the leaves and they just keep coming back. And the thing just kept growing and growing and growing. So, I mean, this is it. You know, I you could go down and spend 2 or $3 a bunch on greens. Or you could just grow, you could get a pot. I'm right now I'm growing in pot in pots too and in the soil both I'm doing a little research experiment I'm so excited I tell you I have just been working so hard to get there that I'm trying to get organized and there's actually there's a cosmic thing happening right now we're all like three different planets or moons and all this stuff is going on up there and I'm not like big into astrology but they said that there's a lot of confusion during that time, and now we're kind of going into a time of organization, and I kind of feel like that. I feel like that's a big goal for me right now is I want to be as organized as possible. I'm getting rid of every single thing I can get rid of, and it feels so good. I've been getting my yard organized. I got this tree trim that hadn't been trimmed for 12 years. It was a freaking monster, and I couldn't really do my garden the way I wanted to because it was blocking all the sun. So I am very excited because that was taken care of this week. <laughs> and then I had to deal with a broken down car and a backed up drain all in the same day. <laughs> I was like a bummer. <laughs> but my neighbor, who had been a plumber for like 30 years, this is a tip you may want to remember this, everybody, because it was the difference between $500 and that was like for the cheap. You know, my neighbor, who is isn't a retired plumber uh, after 30 years, um, he probably would have did the job for me for cheaper, but I mean, you know, it's expensive to go under your house and deal with a clogged drain, and it can be five hundred thousand dollars easy. Okay, so I was just—I have a septic tank, and I always put my bacteria down and everything, but I've always been afraid to put like, you know, poison and all that kind of stuff down because I don't want to disturb my bacteria. Well, he's like. 
we're either going under there and breaking up the pipes and finding the clock or, or you could try lie uh, as some, you know, like declogger. Um, and so I just, I had some lye and that really, all the, a lot of those products, lye is the active ingredient anyway. So why not just use the pure? And I had a system, I'm going to write it all up in my blog because I felt like I learned something from it. But, um, I put the lye down. I actually put it in all the, all the different drains and attacked it from all angles. And, um, I guess like in the middle of the night, it just started going blop, 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 blop. And uh, we weren't sure if it was worse <laughs> or better. <laughs> we thought maybe we were going to be digging a hole in the backyard and going down to Camping World and buying buying a little unit. So we could just take care of business like that. Just dig the hole over this right directly over the septic tank. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, the lie, it, it did the trick, boy. I got to give it credit. <laughs> it ate through that stuff, but I got one little tiny grain on my face, and I could feel it just literally eating through my skin. So you got to be careful with that stuff. And I made sure that I put extra water down the drain so the lie wasn't just sitting there right on the pipe, um, you know, that kind of thing. So you got to be super careful. That stuff is very poisonous, and it... That stuff will eat through it. For all I know, it could have, like, you know, eat right through your finger or something. <laughs> um, but anyway, that was a little tip on um, how I solved that problem, which uh, I was very excited. Very, very excited. Got my tree trimmed and my drain, drain fix all, all, all in the past week. So that was a big accomplishment. But that garden, I am determined. I tell you, I did start some of them in the pots. And um, I've been putting, like, did you know that if you put eggshells around the bottom, because uh, I have earwigs, they come, man, they just come and they just, like, devour the leaves on my plants, especially my, my little babies. And so I got a war going on with those earwigs, too. And one way to get them is to put eggshells, broken up eggshells, around the bottom of the plant because it, it cuts them when they try to walk over it yeah and plus you give your plant calcium and other minerals that are in the eggshells so it's a total win-win so never ever please don't waste your kitchen scraps don't waste your eggshells uh, I never waste an eggshell no way I it either goes in my compost um, I've got all these eggshells I'm going to start planting little plants into and the cartons and uh, put those little eggshells in the ground. They're so cute. And I save them to break up around the plants and get rid of the earwigs. So that's that's pretty cool. Okay, so we, we're kind of going into food here, which is a good segue because, um, oh, and hey, how would you like to support our show? Hey, I hope you would. I hope you're enjoying listening right now. You already learned a few things that you're going to be like, yeah. Elaine taught me some new stuff today. I'm feeling uh, kind of food empowered. <laughs> and uh, maybe I got you thinking. And you're thinking, hey, maybe I should get my garden going. And even, I'm telling you, the pot thing is a good thing. My plants and my peppers and my tomatoes in the pots are doing fantastic. They look so healthy and they got tomatoes on them. I just can't wait till I can eat them. I just keep thinking, oh gosh, it's going to be so great to go out there and just start picking cherry tomatoes and eating them that's one of my very how about you joe do you like to do that oh joe's on the phone sorry um but i don't know about you but i love just you know going out in my garden and start to pick stuff and eat it right there that's good enough for me okay joe's out the phone i wanted to ask you joe do you ever go do you like to go just pick and eat cherry tomatoes right off the vine you know what we were growing cherry tomatoes and they are what we have they're really sweet oh yeah um, yeah. So yeah, we do that at, at our house. Uh, my son, my son's a gardener, and um, that's the so cherry great that he real connect, good. helping to connect him with food there because you like to cook. I do. I yeah. Actually, so I you do. see how all that stuff kind of circles around the the food, they getting connected with food and where it comes from, and then bringing it in the kitchen, and figuring out how you're going to use that to make a meal. You know what? For some reason, uh, the cherry tomatoes at our house, they're sweet. 
they're sweet. And I didn't know, you know, they were that going to be that sweet, but they're actually delicious, you know. So what we do, we just wash them off and we pop them right in the mouth or we put them in our, our daily salad. Yeah, I, I'm lazy. I don't even wash them off. I just pop them in my mouth. But, um, you know, there's actually soil microorganisms that are really healthy for you. And uh, so being able, when you're growing organically and you know it's clean, it actually is good to just eat it right off the vine because you want those soil microorganisms. They can even give you B12, which is really important for vegans. They can get that from soil. Like they don't want to eat meat where you normally get it from, but you can get it from soil by not washing your vegetables all the way. <laughs> you got eat a little dirt, you know, and like they were even reporting on one, this one show that were, oh, it was, oh, excuse me. It was in the soil symphony, um, documentary on how, you know, parents are just like, oh my gosh, you know, my kid put dirt in their mouth, you know, oh, you know, or they, they drop the pacifier on the ground. Oh my gosh, you know, I must wash this. Um, you know, it's like, I remember my kids like handfuls of dirt in their mouth, you know, I mean, this is not a bad, it, it is a bad thing if you're out there spraying Roundup in your yard. And I would say definitely you should be paranoid if you're doing that. But why, why even introduce that poison into your house, into your yard around your kids and your pets? What about that five second rule? If it falls on the ground, it comes for five seconds. <laughs> you know, the thing is, it's good to be exposed to these bacteria. This is how we build our immune system. When we get what, that's how vaccines work. They expose us to a little bit of the actual organism, but in a way where it's not like active, you know, type of a thing. And then our bodies start making um, immune cells. And, you know, I got to tell you, Joe, like, the immune system is one of the most fascinating things I have ever learned about. I love learning learning everything about the immune system. Do you know how that works? Because, okay, let's say a bad guy. There's a mean bad virus invaded your body. You happen to breathe it in or maybe it was on a piece of food that someone touched that had dirty hands. I mean, there's all these different ways you, you could have touched something and then you touched your mouth and it got inside your body, you know, and that's why washing your hands is the number one most important public health message that anyone could ever say, wash your friggin' hands. And it doesn't even matter if you don't have soap, just rinsing them off is important because you're lowering the total amount of bacteria that are sitting there on your skin. That's what it comes down to. You've now reduced the total number of bacteria from like, you know, a trillion down to maybe a million. <laughs> so your chances are going to be less that you're going to get infected. But if it gets inside your body, your immune system is so friggin' amazing. It has these, like the lymph nodes. You probably heard of a lymph node, okay? Those lymph nodes are kind of like border crossings. Yeah, they're in your neck. They're in your groin, okay? Um, lip nodes are like a border crossing. And, you know, you can't get past the border unless you get past inspection and the guard, okay? Your lip nodes are the same thing. You cannot get through the lip node until you've gotten past the inspector. And they're inspecting every single bacteria that's coming through there. And they're like, okay, you're, you're a self-cell. You're okay. You're, you're a self-cell. You're okay. Hey, wait a minute. You. Hey, you come over here. Come. Hey, you don't look like a self-cell to me. Let me see your ID. Oh, I see. You're influenza. You're not a self-cell. Go over to secondary. I don't know if anyone, unfortunately, I've been to secondary. <laughs> Go to secondary inspection, and we're going to check you out even closer. So then you get sent over to secondary, and your body starts checking out who this suspicious, you know, invader is. And they're like, okay, you know, you we know your influenza. There's no denying it. Then what they do is they start taking samples. Your body has a laboratory in the lymph nodes where it starts taking samples 
of that bacteria invader and it gets the protein on the outside of every bacteria is a blueprint that that's the identifier that's how they know it's not a self cell that it's an invader is the protein on the outside of the cell is actually a blueprint and that tells your body if it's an invader or if it's you and so that was kind of like the first you know the first indication why it was sent to secondary then they start looking at it then they start taking samples they take the samples over to their lab and then they start making i mean it's just like star wars with the you know with all those uh, drones and all that they start making antibodies are like little drones they're copies just millions and millions of the same thing that are all specific for that protein on that guy that you pulled over to secondary that one specific influenza they're going to figure out that protein and they're going to make antibodies that are programmed to look for that protein marker on the outside of the cell. So that antibody, its life is all about traveling throughout your body looking for the one protein pattern that it's been programmed to look for. And that's it. That's all it does, that one antibody. It looks for that and it may never encounter another one in your entire life. But then again, it may. You know, it just depends on what you're being exposed to. So, I mean, is this not incredible that your body is able to do all that? But the thing is, your body can do so many great things to protect us and heal us and keep us feeling great. But how is it supposed to do it if we don't give it the raw materials it needs, the fuel that it needs to make these things happen. It does not achieve this out of air. Do you pay your bills from air? Okay. <laughs> no. You know, and it's the same thing in your body. You know, your body cannot create new cells. It cannot repair. I mean, if you don't have any tools, how do you repair your car? If you don't have any new parts, how do you repair your car? You got to go get the parts. Well, your food is the parts that you use for repairs. The nutrients that your body needs. And so, you know, we have to make sure that we're giving the best quality. And I'm hoping that I'm, work I'm getting to you. I'm hoping I'm getting you thinking, you know what? I think Elaine's right. I think I do, I do deserve some good quality food. And I, you know, maybe I can use, learn some of these little tricks that Elaine knows where I can afford to have some higher quality food. I tell you, I eat so simply. Okay. You guys want to start cooking? You let, Let's make something to eat here. Let, let's get started. I want to, I want to start making something to eat. What did I bring that could, anyone. Okay. This is something anybody out there can make. So simple. Who doesn't like burritos? Okay. Who does not like burritos? Okay. Some people don't like beans. Maybe they have a bad, a bad uh, reaction to them. But the more beans you eat, the less reaction you're going to have because your body starts making more of those enzymes to break the beans down. That's why, you know, people that from Mexico, they don't have any problem with beans. Well, maybe there could be a few that would be, seem to have a little bit of a problem. But all in all, you get used to it. Your body makes the enzymes that you need. Okay, now I'm going to show you how you can start cooking your own food again. Forget about those fast food places. You're wasting your money. You're getting no nutrition, and it's costing so much more money. You could be eating way better food instead of going to the fast food restaurants. I'm telling you. Now, I got like this whole package of Ancient grain tortillas, Mi Rancho, made with organic flax and quinoa. Okay, the flax has fiber, omega-3s. The quinoa is full of protein. It's one of the best vegetarian protein sources out there. And these tortillas, you know, they're organic. They are kind of brown color because of the whole grain. And they look delicious. They look absolutely del delicious. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna analyze this a little bit more. 
and see. Okay, one tortilla and is 120 calories. Okay, that's not bad. And uh, they, oh, these actually have aramith, millet, brown rice, quinoa. Now, for those of you that have never heard of aramith before, aramith is an ancient grain. Uh, millet is also an ancient grain. I mean, those of you that like like all those gladiator kind of movies, like back in Roman times, those gladiators, like the main part of their diet on what made them so strong was millet because it was the easiest thing to grow back in Roman times. Brown rice. Um, you know, every once in a while I'll have white rice, but brown rice is so much better. Oh my gosh. It has so much more flavor. It's nutty. I get, I'm more satisfied when I eat it because all rice is really brown rice. They take the outside hull off of it to make the white rice. So it, it's like you're not getting all that nutrition that's in the hull and you're not getting all the fiber that's in the hull. And so much of the, the whole wheat too, they, they deconstruct it to take out the germ, which has high oil, which shortens shelf life. Then they reconstruct it, but it, no way is it like the original. No way. Okay, so I'm opening up my tortillas here. This is like so simple. I have some beans and I'm putting, um, I'm going to work, I had to work on my yard, but get my garden going. But now I'm going to start getting all these. I've been collecting all these recipes for everybody. Uh-oh, there, okay. It was making a sound there. <laughs> um, I've been taking all these pictures and collecting all these recipes that I'm going to share with you so you can start doing your own cooking. And I mean, I cook simple. Simple, fast, low-cost, healthy. You can have all that. You can have it all. You can have it all. Let me tell you. Okay, what do I have here? I have a tortilla. I have a paper towel. And what I usually do at home is with my corn tortillas or my flour tortillas, I don't fry them in grease, oil. Um, I just put them on the burner. I, I feel bad for anyone that has an electric stove. I love gas stoves because I got to cook my tortillas. <laughs> I got to have a gas stove because I got to cook my tortillas on the burner. And you could do it instead. You could put it in a toaster oven or you could put it like in the oven if you wanted to heat it up a little bit. Uh, I personally don't You really use the microwave and I think it makes things kind of rubbery. Um, but if you put this on the burner and just a couple minutes, you know, each side, a little bit on each side, just enough where it heats up and it just gets a little bit of a toasted flavor. It is so good. Sometimes I'll put a little butter on there just as a, a, a splurge, but you don't have to. And so guess what? I still only have 120 calories. If I would add oil and fry in oil, you know, one tablespoon of oil is 100 calories. So if I would fry this in the oil, I would it would probably at least soak up a tablespoon of oil. So instead of 120 calories for my tortilla, my tortilla would be 220 calories. So that's why I like to cook on the burner. See how much calories I'm saving? And this is important because these calories add up because when you get to 3,500, you gain another pound. And it goes just the opposite way when you have a deficit of 3,500 calories, then you will lose a pound. So that's how it works. 3,500 is the magic number. Okay, I have my tortilla and I've got my beans, my pinto beans that I'm going to put that recipe on. These are so easy to make and they're organic. And I found that the organic beans, they seem to stay solid. Like, you know, when you have, when you're growing, when you're missing all these nutrients in the soil, they're not there. They're missing building blocks, holes where there should be nutrition. So what happens is you don't have like the real form of that fruit or vegetable because the, all the nutrition that was supposed to be in it wasn't in the soil. So um, 
I think that's why the conventional beans, when I cook them, they break up in little pieces because they're missing nutrients. The organic beans, I've seen this over and over. I've experimented many times. The organic beans say stay whole unless I smush them with my masher to make a little gravy in my beans, which is one of the way my techniques for cooking beans. So anyway, um, that's why one of the reasons I buy organic beans. And oh, I didn't bring my spices. I was going to bring two today, but oh, that's I knew I forgot something. But anyway, spices can really change a lot. But you don't need a lot of spice with beans. And when you cook beans, never put the salt in until they're done. And usually I just add a few, just a couple of uh, spices. I like to add olive oil uh, to my beans and mush just a few of them up to make the gravy. And you get this nice creamy uh, gravy with the olive oil and the bean juice and a little bit of salt. And really, they're good just like that. You don't need anything, but I please don't use Morton salt. Please go and buy real salt or Himalayan salt or something like that. Okay, um... So I have my beans here. Okay. What did I make to go with my beans? Uh, oh, here we go. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. This took me about five minutes. Okay. These be first of all, the beans, um, I made them on a day that I made a big giant pot because it takes just as much effort to make a big giant pot as a half a pot. And half of them I froze in a Ziploc bag. So when I needed some beans today, I'm telling you, it's so cool. I just go to my freezer. I pull out that Ziploc bag of already made beans. I let them defrost. I just heat up some of them. And I didn't even hardly have to cook. That took me a couple of minutes to heat up those beans. They were already made because I made them the other day. Then I cut up here in my, I have a little container here. Uh, I have some onions, purple onions cut up. I have a tomato cut up and uh, some avocado and some organic uh, cheddar cheese. And just those four things and put that inside my, my tortilla and my beans here. I'm telling you, this that took five minutes to cut that stuff up. Five minutes, that's it. So I heated my beans, I cooked my tortilla a little bit on the burner, I cut up my vegetables, and I got my hot sauce here and this cho cho choula 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 choula. <laughs> I love this stuff, boy. This stuff is so this is my favorite. Tapatio, I like that one too, but this one is really good. So I put a little bit of my hot sauce. Some people like to put ketchup. And uh, there, you can't buy organic ketchup, everyone. All you have to do, I fold up one end. I probably got a little bit too much. I, You know what I like about this tortilla? It's actually a smaller tortilla. And all you have to do is fold it one way, and then you fold it the other way. And voila. Barito. Doesn't that look good? Yum. Picture perfect. I'm telling you, you guys should see this. Wait, I got to take a picture of my burrito here. I got to take a picture. Get it. Oops, I was at the photo thing. Okay, I'm going to take a picture of my burrito here on the air. Okay, now I'm going to go over to my Instagram. To my Instagram. And I want to add that picture of our burrito and that's very healthy what you have in your hand there that burrito you just made huh? I know doesn't that look good okay here we go everyone burrito made on the air right now Explanation point. Okay. Sharing it? Okay. I just shared the picture of my burrito for everyone that wants to take a, take a look at it. Check it out. Okay, so that was one thing that I made. 
Okay, now I'm going to show you a little something. And then we're going to get to dessert because I didn't forget dessert everywhere. We only got 10 minutes left, so I better hurry up. Okay. Here is another five-minute meal. And the, well, actually a cu couple versions of it. And you could do that. This is a great thing for work because I know I've worked in an office before. I know what that's like. And it's so easy to start gaining weight when you're working in an office. <laughs> I'll tell you. Uh, but I have here um, Lotus Foods, which is one of my very favorite companies. They, uh, they have this wonderful rice ramen, which, of course, is gluten-free. It's organic. This one right here is forbidden. So it's a black rice ramen. It's black ramen. <laughs> you know, like top ramen. <laughs> but instead of top ramen, we have organic rice ramen, okay? Now, I learned something about the last time I made this. This is something that you only um, pour boiling water over and you let sit. And you only make it when you're going to eat it. It is not to be stored. Okay, ramen breaks up in little pieces. and You just want to pour the hot water over it and you don't boil it and cook it. So this ramen, I have this ramen. I have a Kadia which is a store brand over at Clark's Nutrition, one of my very favorite stores. Um, organic mixed vegetables. We have some peas, corn, carrots, and green beans. Okay, I have that. And then I have Kadia Free Range Organic Chicken Broth. This only costs like $2.29. Um, the vegetables are like a couple dollars. And then the ramen is probably, I'm guessing, you know, $3 or so. So, you know, two, four you know, five, six, seven, eight, you know, like say $8. Okay, I could get a lot of meals out of this. So what you do is you just take this broth and heat it up. <clears throat> oh, no, I don't need anything. Thanks, Joe. Uh, just heat up your broth till it's boiling hot. Put your vegetables in there. Heat it up a little bit more. And then put your ramen noodles in there. Put the lid on it and let it sit. There you go. That's an instant meal. You could put a little bit of butter in there if you want to kind of make it a little bit richer or maybe add a little bit of other vegetables. I mean, excuse me, um, spices. But how easy is that? Frozen mixed vegetables, broth, and ramen noodles. And you, because of these frozen mixed vegetables, you have pumped the nutrition up. It is no longer just top ramen. You have pumped the nutrition up exponentially with that. Now here I have another good brand, organic turmeric brown rice. And this is by Healthy. Um, and this is very, this cooks in like just a couple of minutes. You could take turmeric, which is great for anti-cancer, um, and the rice. This is organic brown rice. And then you can add some of these frozen vegetables to there. Just mix them up together. How hard is that? Very, very easy. You can cut up greens too, really small pieces. Mix that in there. Pump up the nutrition even more. Uh, some onions. You can even saute some onions in some um, butter or oil, olive oil. And then mix the rice in and the vegetables in. Very. Th this is one pan, five minutes is what I'm talking about, everybody. You can eat healthy, organic food. And these things are not that expensive. This is several meals, okay? When I'm talking the ramen, this is a big bag of ramen, okay? This is a big bag of vegetables and a big container of broth. So, you know, that's several different meals right there. Okay, and then um, I had like some old straw. Don't throw out your food. So many people throw out food when it's still good. You can use vegetables that are starting to get soft in soup or stir fries. They still are good like that. Um, it, maybe they're not good for the salad, but they're good to cook with. Um, I had some strawberries that were organic strawberries, and but they had started getting soft. So I put them in my freezer in a Ziploc. I can tell you the truth, they've been in there for a while. <laughs> I've been trying to clean out my freezer. And I took those, I was thinking I was going to make strawberry syrup. And it had a lot of juice in it from being in the freezer, and they were broken down, so they were mushy. And I just started boiling it. I put some fresh strawberries in there, too, and I put some sugar, and it started boiling it. Next thing I knew, I had jam. <laughs> so 
So I think I went a little bit too far for the syrup. <laughs> but I did end up with some great, and it tastes good. It's strawberry jam, everyone. So I may, and hey, that costs like four bucks, man, four or five dollars, you know, to buy organic jam. And that's organic strawberry jam. So that is so great. Okay, now I want to tell you about one uh, another product here. This is a uh, Gorilla Goods, and these are raw paleo. Um, they have nuts. This has pumpkin seeds. This is savory flavor, so it's not you know sweet type of thing. It's real really satisfying. Has lots of pumpkin seeds. They have a chocolate one that I absolutely love. It's kind of like clusters, but with just it, fruits and nuts and things. That's what it says on there. Fruits and nuts and things. Here's raw seeds and greens. So they're savory ones. So anyway, that's um, that's really goods. Go check them out. They're a really great company. They're one of those companies we like to support. And also uh, My Super Snack uh, from My Super Foods. Uh, I met these ladies. These are two moms that started this company, and they are great ladies. They, you know, they're just trying to support their family. My Superfoods, please go type that in to search and look and see. They're, I absolutely love their packaging. This is an apple raisin granola bite. These are perfect for kids. The packaging, they'll absolutely love it. It has cute little kids on it with capes like super kids because <laughs> it's super snacks, super foods. <laughs> so they all got capes. They're all super kids. Um, apple raisin granola bites in this great packaging and they're little tiny pieces. So they're perfect for little kids. You know, this is, and little me tea. That's another thing to go perfect with it. A little me tea and a super, um, my super foods uh, go perfect together. Um, I actually want to try this right here. I've been wanting to try this so bad. Oh, I wanted to make my dessert. That's what I got to make too. I wonder where my other, where's my cookie? My cookie that I brought. Oh, I may not have my cookie. Anyway, well, what, what I was going to do is um, I have some strawberries here. And I'm not sure what happened to my cookie. But I was going to use a Tasty brand has a strawberry shortcake cookie. And it is so good. It's strawberry flavor. And I have my cut up strawberries here. Then I mixed in a little bit of sugar because it gives a juice there. A lot of people make strawberry shortcake with cake, shortbread, angel food, you know, angel food cake, that kind of thing. Instead, if you don't have that and you have some of the shortbread cookies, you can take a strawberry cookie put some strawberries on top of the cookie and add some, I made some whipped cream here from my, um, my Strauss uh, whipped cream that came in the glass jar. I threw it in the blender. It took me just a couple minutes to whip, make whipped cream from that real whipped cream. <laughs> put that with the cookie and your strawberries, strawberry shortcake. And you know, you could take one cookie one or two cookies with the strawberries and the whipped cream. And that's a nice little dessert. It's portion control. And what's wrong with bringing back a little bit of dessert? You know, I've got some great applesauce here. And I tell you, put some strawberries on top of the applesauce too. These sliced strawberries, put it on top of the applesauce. See all the great things that we talk about here at Smart Health Talk? And I didn't even get to everything. Oh my gosh. Okay, uh, please go to smarthealthtalk.com, everyone, and please find me on social media, okay? I would love for you to join me, and I will follow you, too. So, And tune in next Thursday, 4 o'clock, Smart Health Talk, because we love it when you tune in. We absolutely love it when you join us and start learning how to be smart shoppers. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and take care, everyone. Bye. You're on board KCAA's Inland Talk Express. KCAA, Loma Linda, 1050 AM, the station that leaves no listener behind. I'm Tom Busby, CNBC Radio. President Obama today signing into law a bipartisan bill that provides incentives to boost energy efficiency and cut energy usage in commercial buildings, manufacturing plants, and private homes. Even though U.S. consumer spending rose in March and first-time claims for state unemployment benefits plunged to a 15-year low last week, 
Wall Street saw a big sell-off today. The Dow fell 195 points, the Nasdaq down 82. As investors sifted through a mixed bag of earnings, Apple shares sank on reports of a glitch in its new smartwatch, and oil rose to a new high for the year, just below $60 a barrel. Solid earnings after the bell from insurance giant AIG, Visa, and Gilead Sciences thanks to its hepatitis C drug. But shares of professional networking site LinkedIn tumbled in late trading, down as much as 